Everybody's got their own spots they fish. Um, the biggest thing is just figure out why those fish are there. There's got to be a reason. It could be a spot that just, you know, annually holds a lot of bait. A little bit deeper, but there's always going to be a reason why they're there. And if you can figure out the reason, then you can duplicate that. And the spots will just be endless at that point. Whoever has the most spots will win. Well, that was D-Hart's famous quote. If you don't know who Captain Bud Bishop is, it's time you did. He's a North Carolina inshore charter captain whose territory covers about 150 square miles. He's known for fishing the more remote territories of Eastern North Carolina, and his success has rightfully earned him an excellent reputation. Today, he's agreed to let me pull back the curtain and reveal some of his secrets to you on catching more trout and bigger trout in colder weather. His wingman on this trip is Lawrence Benner, a trout fisherman who takes lure science and theory to a whole nother level. His dedication and enthusiasm when it comes to fishing is contagious, and we're in for an exciting trip. We've got some sick hookups on straight gators in this video today. You don't want to miss a second. Let's roll. So apparently, right now, we're only catching these dinks. If they haven't been here, we had a really, really good class of fish that was here, and they're still here. But these dinks are, I think they just react a lot quicker. And you kind of got to get them out of the way to get to the bigger fish. And a lot of these smaller ones will school up, school up pretty good. It's like throwing out a, a big cobia with a bunch of little ones around it. You're never going to get that big one. The little ones just won't let them have it. Thrashing. Signs of a good trout there. They grab this net for me, Lawrence. Yep. Heavy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice trout. Nice trout. Nice trout. Nice trout. Sweet. Nice trout. Twenty dollars. That's only what, like a twenty-three inch right there. <laughs> and the funny thing is I caught it behind me. So like she saw your bait and didn't want it. Yeah, yeah. I left that one for you. <laughs> Sweet. Do you have an opinion on uh, trolling motor speed and noise? with trout and, and, and boat presence in general with um, fishing and that all depends on water depth like if it's if it's extremely deep like if you're catching them in 10 to 15 foot i mean i've caught them with the outboard running um but if you get less than five foot five foot of water is definitely a boat presence issue you definitely want to cast with the wind cast downwind make long casts you usually catch them at the end of your cast but yeah there's definitely a definitely an issue there Always stop at least three casts off of where you're gonna fish. A lot of these trout, when they school up, they'll be, even if you find them around bait or structure, a lot of times they're there, they may not be right on it at the moment because they're not feeding real heavy. And they could be up to 100 yards off of it. And typically you wanna look for a shallow body of water really close to a deep body of water. And those fish will stay in that deep body of water. When they're not feeding, they'll come up shallow to feed. We'll just stay a ways off of it. This is a nice fish here. Love it. Oh, dang. Oh, yeah. Staying down. Yeah, she's heavy, too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful.
barely hooked. Wow, she didn't throw her head and she's right on the corner like that? Wow. Heck uh, yeah. I saw you baby that one. <laughs> that one's about 23. That's beautiful. So interesting, interesting thing about these trout here versus over there where we were fishing is that uh, their spots over there in the preserve I was fishing in Florida, since they've been landlocked for so long, they don't have all these spots yeah. here. They have a lot of purple in the head and the short and shoulder area, but they don't really have all these spots. They only have a few. Um, so you can definitely tell the difference there. You might just want to stay back here with me. <laughs> man, is he loving it today, man. Oh, boy. Oh, it's comparable to like a, a heavy dine, like an MR18. Lawrence figured out a way that you can actually break them. You can break the inlay inside and make them sink slower. And I'll, that's a good one. They were fired up now. That he hammered that thing. I mean, he won't even net them for me anymore. It's like he's just getting, but Lawrence is getting salty. Knew you could do it, there. <laughs> <laughs> they love the gummy worm. The gummy worm that Bud is throwing is actually the color name of a lure called the peanut. It was created by Paul Brown, who is now 88 years old and retired in Texas. His son, Steve Brown, still hand makes each peanut along with the broke back corky, the bug eye, and many others. Lawrence has developed a creative working relationship with Steve Brown and actually collaborated to make designs and colors more suitable for brackish water. One peanut color is even named after Lawrence, the L Sure Thing. We should up it to like a hundred dollars next time. It just makes it feel so much more special to catch that fish when you kind of put the time in to try to come up with a new lure and things that I used to think were not capable, you know, to be doing, talking with certain people, being able to interact with what they do for a living to try to create something that is more suitable for uh, your fishery in particular, your state, body of water. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to have those relationships. And then feeling that positive hook set on something that you uh, had a hand in doing, I mean, it just makes it so much more better of an experience. I mean, I wouldn't say it's one. Grab that <laughs> go 18. broke back. Grunting. I didn't realize you switched off the jig. Yeah, I, I prefer more of the broke back myself, but um, the peanut has been working pretty good. So I was throwing the peanut, but this definitely takes a little bit more practice throwing, the, throwing that one. So bud, as we film this video today, Marine Fisheries is meeting tomorrow, and one of the topics they're going to be discussing is uh, the speckled trout and whether or not they're being overfished and, and that sort of thing. Do, do you have an opinion on it, or, or can you tell me where you stand on it? Yeah, I definitely think they're being overfished. You can't really blame people that really won't let them fish for anything else. You know, the striper's one. Um, and now tomorrow, it's, it's none here. The drum's only one. The flounder's, what, a month now? And it's, it's only one. So, I mean, people want to fish for what they can keep. So it's definitely brought a lot of people here. 
to fish for these trout. In my opinion, what they should do is put a slot limit on them. Do it 14 to 21 inches or like 15 to 22 or 15 to 23 inches and let you keep one trophy fish over that. It would do away with a lot of, a lot of your big breeder females, you know, getting caught and stuff like that. That's, yeah. just, that's just my opinion on I, it. I could get behind that for sure. Yeah, but going to dropping the season down, making an actual trout season, it's probably one of the dumbest ideas. And then raising the, the minimum length up to 15 inches would do nothing. All your breeder fish are still gonna get kept. And making it only three fish per person would take years and years and years to see the benefits from that, if you would even see it at that point. So really the slot limit, if they're gonna do anything, is really the only, the only thing I could get behind. I mean, but it's really all for nothing if we have a trout kill. You know, if we have a freeze, you know, they're gonna shut it down anyways. So it's like, I mean, these fish have been around forever, so. Yeah, there's a lot of nice big fish around right now. Yeah, that's just, just my opinion on it. Bud let me know that Marine Fisheries has been reaching out to inshore captains regarding speckled trout and other fisheries, and that most captains share the same opinion, at least on trout. When a fishery suffers decline and limitations are put on anglers, captains are affected in many ways. Their livelihoods depend on customers being able to take home fish to eat. Ultimately, a complete closure of a fishery can be a death nail to a charter business. Sometimes hard steps have to be taken to ensure that doesn't happen. Most of these captains fish with the seasons and migrations, stripers, trout, and redfish. They adapt when they have to, and they suffer like the rest of us when we can't pursue what we love. So there's, there's your pot of bait. There's another pot of bait. There's a gar. There's a school of trout. Bait, gar, trout. I admit I'm behind the curve when it comes to bottom machines, especially side scan. Most guys I know that have upgraded are still trying to figure out how to use them. There's a reason there's 500 videos on YouTube teaching side scan and live scope because it's high tech and most of us are not. Bud, however, could teach a class on the finer points. But the fish he catches next, and it's a huge trout, he later told me the only thing he did was notice the sharp contour on the bottom, the depth change. And that can be found with bottom machines that most of us have. He picked up a rod and took one cast. True story. There he is. Nice fish. She's heavy, boy. Oh, she's putting on a shell, ain't she? What'd you throw at her? Woo! Peanut. That was a nice boy. She's nice, dude. We'll get right by you. Yep. Man, look at that fish. Oh, yeah. She's a big one. Dude. Oh, yes. She's barely hooked here. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. You tell me when. Look at her. Beautiful trout. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Up, she hammered that thing. Oh, 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 oh. That's a hard, hard. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. That's a 27. 27? Yeah, I'm gonna say 27. It's <laughs> awesome there. $20 fish right there. Off. You pull off the throttle out here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yep. Whew. Sweet. There's no doubt that fishy dudes have good instincts and some guys enjoy the challenge of seeing how fish react to different colors and speeds. Thanks to Captain Bud Bishop and Lawrence Benner for letting all of us join them on this trip. We'll see you on the next one. Something like it. 
I don't know if it's necessarily exactly right, but. Hot cheetah. <laughs> hot cheetah. That is a hot cheetah. <laughs>